Okay, if you needed a little bit more help with going through our review of graphing systems of equations or substitution or elimination, whoops, wherever it is, elimination, um, this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through how to do these as a quick reminder. So um, number one, you're just going to pretend like there's only one line here, uh, one equation here, y equals x plus 2, and let's first start by graphing that one. So y equals x plus 2. You're going to put your first dot at 2 because that's the y-intercept. You are going to go up 1 over 1 because that is that hidden kind of invisible slope. 1 over 1, 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. There are a lot of dots. I didn't realize how big this graph paper was. Sorry. Um, go ahead and put them everywhere because I'm not going to take time to get out a ruler. So the more dots you have on there, the straighter the line's going to be, even without a ruler. Okay, now let's look, let's cover up the top equation and let's only look at this bottom one. So we're going to graph it now. So first dot at the y-intercept, which is negative 2, and the slope is 3 over 1. Remember, if it's a whole number, turn it into a fraction, 3 over 1. So you're going to go from this dot up 3 over 1, keep going up 3 over 1, and I see that that dot is already on a dot that was already there, so that is the point that they intersect. So I'm going to kind of bullseye it. So keep going 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1. You can go back down 3 over 1 as long as your pattern is going the same way it was. Um, more dots on there is going to ensure your straighter line. Oof, maybe. Mine's not very straight. And then the answer is not actually your graph. The answer to solve the system is where they intersect. What is the solution? And the solution is right here. And that is coordinate point 2, comma, Four. So the actual answer to the system is where they intersect, which is 2, 4. Okay, number 2. Um, I'm going to cover up that bottom one, and I'm just going to look at this top equation, and I'm going to put a dot at 3, and I'm going to count the slope up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1, keep going, go back down 2 over 1, until you get as many dots on there as possible. Draw in your line as straight as you can. Arrows on both ends. Okay, and then now let's cover up the top equation and look at just the bottom one. My y-intercept is 1, and my slope is 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Huh. So what you should see is that these two lines are parallel. They never intersect, which actually you should have known just by looking at the equations because they have the same slope. And same slopes means they don't intersect. So if the solution is where they intersect, where do these intersect? Nowhere. So that means there is no solution. They don't ever intersect anywhere. So it's no solution. Okay, last one. Let's cover up the bottom equation and just graph the top one first. Last one of these, that is. So we're going to put a dot at 4 on the y-axis because that is the y-intercept. And the slope is negative 3, so I'm going to go down 3 over 1. Don't forget, negative means you go down and then to the right. Okay, down 3 over 1. I'm going to go back and finish the dots in the other direction to make as straight of a line as I can. Ooh. A little rough. That's okay. And now the problem with the second equation is it's not in slope intercept form. So I'm going to need to do a quick rearranging to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x and move it to the other side. So now y is by itself. y equals negative 3x minus 4. So I'm going to put my first dot at negative 4 on the y axis and I'm going to go down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1 down 3 over 1. This is feeling familiar. Go back up 3 over 1 just to continue it in the same direction. What you're noticing is it is staying the same distance away from my other dots because once again these are parallel. And we would have known that by looking at the slopes and seeing that this one is negative 3 and this one is negative 3 so they will never intersect therefore they have no solution. Okay. Um, let's go down and work on substitution. So 
If you forgot how to substitute, what you have to do is get either y or x by itself in either one of the two equations, and it doesn't matter which one. And since they both already have y by themselves, I am going to look at just the top equation. So y equals this, y equals this, negative x minus 6. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it into my other equation for y. And the reason it's because it's what y equals. So I'm going to put it here for y. So I'm going to rewrite this bottom equation, but instead of y, I'm going to substitute negative x minus 6 in right here for y. So I'm just going to rewrite it. Negative x minus 6 is right there for y equals x minus 4. And now I'm just going to solve it because now I can solve it because we only have x as a variable. So I'm going to add 1x to both sides. That cancels it out over here and leaves negative 6. On the right, 1x plus another 1x is 2x minus 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Bring down 2x. I'm running out of room, but that's OK because it's my last step. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. x equals negative 1. OK, that is half of my answer. Negative 1 is my x coordinate. I need the other coordinate now. I need the y. So you have some options. You can either plug negative 1 in for x in this equation or in this equation. And then once you solve it, you'll have what y equals. Um, I see that it's a negative, and there's already a negative here. And that's a little confusing to have a negative negative. And I don't want you to make a simple mistake. So I'm going to choose to plug it into this equation. So I'm going to write y equals, instead of x, I'm going to use negative 1 because that's what x is. So negative 1 minus 4. And you can probably do that in your head. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. So now I have my x and my y. So that is where they would meet if I was graphing them. That's their solution. Negative 1, negative 5. Okay, let's go on to the next page. All right, you have to get either x or y by itself, and I see in the top one we've already got y by itself, so I'm going to grab what it says y equals, and I'm going to plug it right here in for y. Um, the reason I'm putting it in parentheses is because this is going to be a negative that's going to get distributed by everything inside the parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite this bottom equation, but instead of y, I'm going to plug in 3x minus 2 to substitute it in. So x minus parentheses, 3x minus 2, equals 4. All right, and I'm just going to solve it. So distribute your negative. That is a hidden invisible negative 1, if that helps you distribute it. So negative, well, I'll just bring down the x for now. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And I'm going to combine my like terms. x minus 3x is negative 2x. I'm going to uh, not add, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. I'm running out of room again. 4 minus 2 is 2. Uh, divide both sides by negative 2. x would be equal to negative 1 again. So we have half of our answer. Our x coordinate is negative 1. And now I need to use that x coordinate to plug it into either this x or this x, and it doesn't matter. And the reason I'm plugging it in for x is because it's what x equals. It's what x equals. So negative 1, um, I'll just go ahead and put it in this first equation. So I'm going to say y equals 3 times negative x minus 2. So y equals 3 times negative 1 minus 2. So that would be negative 3 minus 2. So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So now my y is negative 5. So the whole answer is the coordinate negative 1, negative 5. That's where they would intersect. All right, 6. Um, both of these are already rearranged by themselves. So it doesn't matter which one. So I am just going to take the top one, and it's what y equals. So I'm going to plug it in over here for y. And you don't really need parentheses on this one because you're not distributing it. It's just on this side by itself. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this whole equation, but instead of y, I'm going to put 2x minus 10 
equals 4x minus 8. So um, I'm going to go way over here where I have a little bit more space. So I'm going to say 2x minus 10 equals 4x minus 8. And I'm just going to solve the equation. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. Negative 10 equals 2x minus 8. I'm going to add 8 on both sides. 2x equals, um, what would that be, negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. x would equal negative 1 again. Are you kidding me? Negative 1. Okay, well, x is negative 1 again. So now that I know that x is negative 1, I can plug it into this equation for x or this equation for x, and it doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer either way. So I'll just plug it into this top equation. So y equals 2 not x, but times negative 1, because that's what x is, minus 10. All right, that would be negative 2 minus 10. So negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. So y equals negative 12. All right, last one of these substitution. You have to get either x or y by itself, and it's not in the top, but it is in the bottom. So y equals this. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to plug it in right here for y. I'm going to substitute it because it's what y equals. So I'm going to rewrite this top equation to, not y though this time, I'm going to substitute negative 2x minus 3 in for y equals 2x plus 12. All right, and then I'm just going to solve this equation. 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x. 2 times negative 3 is minus 6. Um, I'm going to choose to add 4x on both sides. The way you solve these doesn't matter. Just check and make sure you get the same answer I do. I'm going to subtract 12 next from both sides. Ugh, I'm writing way too big or something. There's not enough room here. Negative 6 minus 12, I believe, is negative 18. I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And once you divide both sides by 6, you're going to get x equals negative 3. I was curious to see if we'd get negative 1 again, but nope. So x equals negative 3 this time. And now that we know x is negative 3, you can plug it in up here or right here and solve it. And it doesn't matter. This actually looks like it might be a little easier. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, and instead of x, I'm going to make it negative 3. So y equals negative 2 times not x, but negative 3 minus 3. I think that was right. Yes. Okay, so just solve it. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, and 6 minus 3 is just 3. So y equals 3. All right, let's move on to your review of elimination. So when you eliminate, they have to be both equations have to be in standard form. So that means ax plus by equals c. But basically, in short terms, what it means is the x and the y are on the same side of each other. So x and y are on the same side, x and y are on the same side, x and y are on the same side, x and y are on the same side. So actually, none of these are, need, are going to need to get rearranged. They're already all set up really nice and neat for you. So now that we know they are in standard form, if I had had it in slope-intercept form, that'd be a lot easier to use substitution. But since they're both in standard form, we're going to use elimination. So I need to eliminate either the x's or the y's, but none of them are opposites. These two are almost opposite. I would just need to double this. If I had 4x and negative 4x, they would cancel out. So in order to double this, I have to double the whole equation. So I'm going to take this whole equation and double it. This is not the only way to do this one, by the way. Um, so I'm going to write these off to the side so I have a little bit more space. So the top one was 4x plus 3y equals negative 5. And the bottom one, after I double it, distribute my 2, is going to be negative 4x plus 4y equals 12. Okay, since those are opposites, you add to cancel them out because 4x plus negative 4x cancels out. So we need to add all the other terms as well. So 3y plus 4y is 7y. 
negative 5 plus 12 is 7. And now we've almost got y solved. All you would need to do is divide both sides by 7. y equals 7 divided by 7, which is 1. So we have half of our answer. This time we have our y coordinate, so that's over here. We don't have our x coordinate yet. So now that we know y is 1, we can use either the top equation or the bottom or the one I doubled. It does not matter. And I'm going to take it and plug in 1 for y. So um, I'll just use the top first equation. It really doesn't matter which one you use. So 4x plus 3y, not y, but times 1, because that's what y is, we just solved, equals negative 5. All right, that would be 4x plus 3. So then I would subtract 3 on both sides. 4x equals negative 8. Divide both sides by 4. x equals negative 2. So my x coordinate is negative 2. All right, so number 9. I can't eliminate either one. 8 and 3, 2 and 3. So I'm going to, this is not the only way to do it, but I'm going to make this 6y and 6y. So I'm going to multiply my top equation by 2 and my bottom equation by 3 so that my middle two terms will both be 6y. This is not the only way to do it. If you did it a different way, check your final answer because it might be, it should be the same answer I get even if we pick different things to multiply by. So that would be 16x plus 6y equals 26. The bottom one would be 9x plus 6y equals 33. Now, in this case, I'm not going to add because if I add, they won't eliminate. 6 plus 6 is not 0. It would be 12y. So I want to subtract each of the terms because 6y minus 6y is 0. So those would cancel out. So I've got to subtract the other two terms too. So 16x minus 9x is 7x. 26 minus 33 is negative 7. I've almost got x by itself. All I have to do last is divide both sides by 7. And x would be equal to negative 1. Look at that. x is negative 1 again. Okay. And then we use x being negative 1 and plug it into this equation or this one or this one or this one. It does not matter which one. Um, I'm just going to go with my top original one. So 8x, not x, just kidding, 8 times negative 1 because that's what x is, plus 3y equals 13. This would be negative 8. So therefore, I would add 8 to both sides. 3y equals 21. I hope I did that math right. Divide both sides by 3. y equals 7. So my y coordinate is 7. All right, two more. Here we go. Oh, I love this one. 5x and negative 5x. Guess what? Those already eliminate by adding because 5x plus negative 5x is 0. So let's add the others. 4y minus plus negative 2y is 2y. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Divide both sides by 2. And look at that. I've already got my y coordinate. It is negative 3. So part of my answer, my y coordinate part, is negative 3. Now that I know that, I'm going to plug negative 3 in for either one of these two y's, and it does not matter which one. I'm going to choose that first one. So 5x plus 4, not y, but times negative 3, because that's what y is, equals negative 7. All right, 5x minus 12, because that's negative 12. So I'm going to now add 12 to both sides. 5x equals negative 7 plus 12. Negative 7 plus 12. I know I should have just done that in my head. I'm sorry about that. 5. Divide both sides by 5, and x would be 1. So my x coordinate is 1. All right, last one. Um, I see that these two would already eliminate just by subtracting them. 
So I am going to subtract all three terms. So negative 2x minus 4x. I'm going to use my calculator just because negatives are a little tricky. So if I do negative 2 minus 4, it should be negative 6. So be careful on this one. This is negative 6x. If I subtract 2 minus 2, 2y minus 2y, those eliminate. And 6 minus negative 5. Be really careful with negatives. 6 minus negative 5 is positive 11. So be careful there. Um, this is not going to come out evenly. Yuck. But that's okay. Divide both sides by 6. X equals, I might just leave it 11 sixths, but let's see what the fraction is. Oh, yeah. 1.83 repeating. So we're going to call X 11 sixths. We're going to leave it like that. Oops. That's half of my answer. The other half is I need to take 11 sixths, ooh, and plug it into either one of these equations for x because it's what x is. So here I go. Negative 2 times not x but times 11 sixths. Sorry about this problem, guys. Plus 2y equals 6. It's good to end on a challenge. Here we go. We got this. Um, negative 2 times 11 sixths is, I have no idea. Negative 2 times 11 ABC button 6, that's your fraction button, is negative 3, and this is supposed to be a space, negative 3 and 2 thirds. So negative 3 and 2 thirds plus 2y. So I'm going to add 3 and 2 thirds to both sides. 2y equals, that would be 9 and 2 thirds. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, so here I go. 9 and 2 thirds divided by 2. 9, ABC 2, ABC 3, that's 9 and 2 thirds divided by 2. 4 and 5 sixths. That looks awesome. 4 and 5 sixths. Okay, and that's my Y coordinate. So 4 and 5 sixths. There you go.